In this lesson, we'll cover adding detail to our drafting views. So currently, we're looking at a drafting view. Basically, everything here has been drafted. The lines are drawn, the circles, the curves, the arcs. Even the text has been added, and the callouts. So how do we go about adding detail to a drafting view? We'll add detail to this drafting view as a guideline, but technically what you would do is first start by creating a drafting view. To create a drafting view, you would go to the View tab, and in the Create panel, you would choose Drafting View. This would basically create a blank background for the drafting view. The two things it would ask would be the drafting view name and also the scale. So right now I can see this drafting view name here is the typical rectangular column view or the name of the drafting view. And the scale right now is one to four. Now you can always change that at a later point. So let's go ahead and zoom in to the symbol in the upper left, the six bars with a one tie, one hook per set. And as you mouse over each of these elements, you can see their lines. And if you click on each line and you look at the properties on the left, Every line that you click on has a line style. Like this one's letter N. This line is wide lines. If you zoom in a little closer, you have several circles in the corner, and I can see those are of the letter N, or line type N. So basically, again, these are just lines. So the next step is to actually start to create detail, or add detail. We're going to draft our detail, or draw our lines. To do that, Let's go to the Annotate tab on your ribbon. On the Annotate tab, you have two areas for drawing different types of things. You have the Detail area, which is going to allow us to draft or draw our lines. And then you also have an area over to the right for different symbols, which allows us to place symbols and modify those symbols. For Detail, though, let's start out by adding Detail Lines. So let's just click Detail Line. Now the first thing you want to set is your line style. That's going to be in the upper right part of the ribbon. Here we can set the different types of lines that we want to create. Now all of these lines are managed on the Manage tab for line style. One of the ones I'm going to use initially is thin lines. So I'm going to select thin lines. And that's going to represent this rectangle that goes around the outside of the shape. Then I'll use the rectangle command on the draw bar. And now I'm just going to simply draw a rectangle. Now the size here technically doesn't matter. It's more of the exercise of just using the command. So I've created the line, in this case thin lines, in the shape of a rectangle. Now for the inner lines, it's using the line style of a wide line. So I can click Wide Lines. And then I could choose Rectangle again and draw another rectangle and draw this one internally. Again, doesn't have to be accurate for this size. Then the actual circles in each corner are using a line style by the letter N. So I can change the line style to N, then click the circle tool on the draw panel and draw some circles. Maybe there were three. So I can draw three circles here within my shape. And again, it doesn't have to be exactly the same as the other. It's more of just the exercise to use the tool. So as you can see, we're basically drafting the details that go into this actual drafting view. Now, there's another method too, because maybe some of the actual details you're creating already exist as a detailed element. Go ahead and click Modify in the upper left. And let's switch to the last view, the typical welded moment connection view right below the current one that's active in the browser in the lower left. Here we can actually see another detail view. And here we have symbols. So you see you have various different types of symbols placed within this view, but you also have some lines that are drafted. But you also can enter in components that are in 2D, detail components, if you will. You can see that in the detail area part of your ribbon when you're on the Annotate tab. Here you can place in a detail component. The drop-down allows you to place a detail component or a repeating detail component. Now, a repeating detail component would be an example of brick going up the outside of the building. If you click Detail Component, on the left in the property area are the current details that are loaded into this Revit project. So right now I'm looking at this ML angled bolted connection 
section. And I could see it's a detailed element. And it's made of lines. So I could really place this anywhere in my drawing, in this case the drafting view, just by placing it. And now it's part of this detail. And I can add more lines to it and draft with the actual detail commands in the detail panel. Now, if you don't have a component loaded that you want to use, you can load those components in. For example, I could click component again, and if I don't have one in the property box that I want, I can go all the way to the right and click load family. By default, Revit opens either to the Imperial or metric library of your different components. Double click on the actual detail items folder to open up the different divisions and classifications of detail elements you could add in to your actual detail drawing. And here you can see there's a variety of different types of, in this case, details you could use for your various different designs. So I could look at Division 5 Metals. In Division 5 Metals, I could have in place different type of metal fabrications or framing elements that I would like to use within my structural detail view. And simply just choosing one of these will actually display the image on the right of what these elements look like. Once you find the one that you want, select it, click Open. It's now loaded into your Revit project and you're ready to place this inside of your detail view. Click Modify in the upper left. Symbol all the way on the right side of the ribbon is the exact same thing. If you click Symbol, you have a drop down for symbols that are currently loaded, in this case, a weldment symbol that I'm currently looking at, but you also have arrows and center lines. And again, if you don't see the symbol you want, click Load Family on the right side of the ribbon, browse to the Annotation Symbol folder, and select the symbol you want. Click Modify in the upper left. So as a review in this lesson, we looked at adding detail to our drafting views. We looked at a couple different methods. One is to manually draft or sketch drawing our lines within the detail, where we actually use the different tools for designing lines, curves, circles, and arcs using different line styles or weight or thickness. We also looked at entering in 2D or drafting components, details, if you will, that already exist. So we loaded those in as a component, and then if we didn't see the details already in our Revit project that we want, we can browse out to the default libraries from Revit and enter in or load in any of those details. And lastly, we looked at symbols, placing symbols inside of our detailed drawings.